Next, it's alien good guy versus alien bad guy. But which is which? It's action. It's science fiction. It's Peacemaker. Next on Cinemax. Three, two, one. Cinemax blasts up with 146 movies in May. We sail into history. But will anyone be alive to witness it? Oh my God, they've got a madman on their hands. The Hunt for Red October, part of a month of movies starring Sean Connery. It's a new experience for me. Then, terror stalks the airwaves. No! When Amy Irving uncovers a deadly political conspiracy. You used me. Based on a true story, a show of force. And was she his number one fan or obsessive fanatic? I love you! Play Misty for me. Next stop, the Arcade Hotel, where you'll find seven guests, three stories, one gunshot, and the ghost of Elvis. It was the king himself. <laughs> Mystery Train. Then, from France, Isabella Johnny and Gerard Depardieu recreate a notorious 19th century romance in Camille Claudel. Next, the moon is full, and guess who is back? Happy Friday the 13th. Plus, the invisible maniac. I can think of only one thing even more terrifying. The might of military max. Take a shot at me right in the nose! With George C. Scott as Patton and Clint Eastwood flying the firebox. Later this month, what's the quickest way to the pearly gates? You gotta get, you know. Short time. Crazy about the movies visits Dennis Hopper and Catch 5 starring Dennis Hopper all month long. More movies, more choice. Right here! On Cinemax. Uninhibited. Ambitious. April on Vanguard Cinema. All right, now get out your money and fast. What is this, some kind of joke? It's two for the road as a pair of petty drifters plunder vehicles and women at will in this controversial tale from the 70s. Is she ugly? Beautiful to me. Gerard Depardieu and Jean Moreau star in the uncut version of the Cinemax import, Going Places. The banks always take us for a right, but now I take them for a right. It's a tongue-in-cheek jab at American consumerism as Marianne Sagerbrecht plays it fast and loose with some checks and balances. It's not enough just to confess everything. You have to be sorry. Someday, I'm gonna have you arrested. From the director of Baghdad Cafe, Brad Davis and Judge Reinhold co-star in the Cinemax new wave film, Rosalie Goes Shopping. Cash as usual. Fresh perspectives, unique visions. Vanguard Cinema in April on Cinemax. Cable is America's choice, and April is National Cable Month. TV, you gotta see. And if you like movies, you'll love Cinemax. More than anything else in the world, what do you want? What kind of game are you playing with? My life, this is my life. Saturday, April 27th at 10 p.m., Rob Lowe and James Spader star in a dark story of deception. Bad influence on Cinemax. Don't touch that dial. Tune in and take a look. April is National Cable Month. TV you gotta see. for its unsettling effects on the citizens of Los Angeles, the Santa Ana winds bring a new kind of devil to the city of angels in Trimar Pictures' Warlock. The story was the brainchild of screenwriter David Tui and started as a 14-page sample script. Warlock was brought to the screen by Arnold Coppelson, Academy Award-winning producer of Platoon. But uh, Arnold has a good nose for sniffing out uh, commercial material and or important material. And... Uh, he went off from Deuce Platoon, and shortly thereafter, we set up Warlock. Frank and John, just so you know. So hey, exciting. You have to start up all three he looks four like the Warlock, more than I ever envisioned. I perceive that an exciting film about a male witch would be very current and apropos and, and entertaining.
cut. It's a cut. Not only is the movie filled with action and stunts, but the big challenge was the movie magic of special effects. When I'm writing the special effects scenes, I can't, I don't want to be concerned with how difficult it may be to engineer those scenes, to make them real. It would limit my imagination. I don't want to do that. Um, so in some ways, it's best that the writer doesn't know how damn hard it is going to be to realize these things on film. It's not my problem. Uh, I leave that up to Steve Miner. It's his problem. Let's do the Warlock. Okay. I encourage them to do is not worry about, A, how much it costs, or B, if it's possible to execute. Think of something really cool and uh, write it down, and we'll take it from there. One of the more difficult tasks for director Steve Miner and special effects coordinator Pat Johnson was creating the Warlock's deadly ectoplasmic blasts. I was not of the belief that we could do ectoplasm with hand-drawn animation. And these geniuses out of perpetual motion said to me, no, 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 we got a guy, we got a way, we can do this. And I said, well, okay, let's see it. And that's where we'll take some light that matches the, basically the consistency, the color, the, the dynamics of what the effect would be that's going in there. And when we add the animation, it's seamless. Particular to this scene, as the warlock is writing with the, uh, with the ectoplasm, he looks back, he's looking back maybe two feet, three feet, those are important points. We have to make sure we animate trails behind his hand. What's particularly nice about this shot is that the actor does look around. He is looking at something. So when the animation is there, it, it, it feels like it belongs. It's really there. It fits. I also had always been thinking of Julian Sands as a warlock. And for me, he was a better warlock because he was the antithesis of what the warlock, what people would expect the warlock to be. Channel me a spirit. I need one. Zamiel. Ask me what you This character's malevolent, and I've never played a malevolent person before. I've been offered villains before, but it was, it's, it was particularly the, um, the attributes of the warlock. I play the character Cassandra in the film Warlock. There's tremendous power in this movie. I have a spell cast on me, and the spell makes me go from 20 years old to 40 years old to 60 years old, and I don't know that within three days, four days, I'm going to be dead. Why couldn't you just kill me? Cassandra is this very spirited girl, despite tremendous odds and overwhelming odds. She, she, she comes through and saves the world. I mean, how, how often do you get to be the one that saves the world? I'm in charge of the safari now, and if I say you're gonna... Keep it. Keep it? What are you doing with me? Just keep it! I'm playing Jazz Redfern, who is... Um, a man from the... a witch hunter from the 17th century, who finds himself in the 20th century and having to cope with the problems. <laughs> movie magic, that's movie magic. It's alien good guy versus alien bad guy. But which is which? It's action. It's science fiction. It's Peacemaker. Next on Cinemax. In the dead of winter, two desperate criminals escape from prison near the Canadian border. Move. What do we do now? Some believe they've perished in the woods. Wake up, Jimmy. Wake up. What are you, priests? Yeah, that's right. We're priests. Others believe they survived. I'm sure they're looking for you. Who's looking for it? The monastery, your fellow priest. Yeah, I'm sure they're looking for it. But who would believe that such a small town could make such a big mistake? We need a moment to compose our thoughts. Now they've got a profession to fake. This is Father Brown and Father Riley. Priests. No hard feelings, Father. Go with God. 
and a woman to win. What are you looking at? A warden to lose. So you buck up, Jimmy, and you act like a priest. A past to protect and a future to plan. Robert De Niro, Sean Penn, Demi Moore, We're No Angels. You make my heart sing. What I want is for us to finish dead last. Tom Berenger, Charlie Sheen, Corbin Burnson, and Bob Uecker. Major Lee. Don't steal home without it. Tomorrow on Cinemax. Four decades ago that the House Un-American Activities Committee, known as HUAC, put Hollywood on trial. She was falsely accused. She couldn't get work. She had no, her son was taken away from her, all because of this committee. George B. Nolan killed herself, and the Communist Party twisted her mind. In no the name words. of ridding the world she of communism, no you question. destroyed her was life. Was she or was she not a communist? Don't you have any shame? She's dead! Many of the film industry's creative talents were falsely accused of having communist ties. These accusations resulted in a blacklisting campaign that would destroy many lives. In whose homes did those Communist Party meetings take place? Don't you have an ounce of decency? I need permission to use your name, David. You want my permission to inform on me? In whose homes? Guilty by Suspicion is a disturbing story of censorship that Hollywood has taken 40 years to tell. Robert De Niro, who has been directed by Martin Scorsese and produced by Erwin Winkler, has the tables turned on him in this film, with Scorsese acting, Winkler directing, and he, De Niro, playing a director being harassed by HUAC. I used to joke with Erwin about, you know, maybe I should wear a beret and go around with a bullhorn or something. Um, that's the nice thing, you kind of know what it is. You don't have to overdo anything, uh, go for the more subtle things, because you're solid about knowing who you are, what it's about. And so Marty was fine, you know, he was a uh, very real, very good sense of truth. And, uh, you know, he did come up with a couple of lines that he improvised yeah, himself, really which good. were very, very good. Yeah. I mean, he, he came in very, very prepared. I assume he came in as prepared as he wanted the uh, other actors that work for him when he's a director uh, to be prepared. I was a communist 20 years ago, I'm a communist now. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> well, you've heard it. I didn't hear anything. Did you hear anything? It was very comfortable for all of us. We all knew who we were. and what we're doing. What the hell did I do so wrong? I gave you guys everything I could. I never cheated on you. I worked hard on my job. What at did I do studio. wrong? Yeah, at the studio, on the set, in the editing room. They don't make movies at home, Ruth. Zanuck didn't help you, did he? Ruth is married, was married to David Merrill, uh, the character that Robert De Niro plays. She's stable, she's strong, she has emo emotional depth. She's not part of Hollywood. She's